Welcome to the Growth Paramedic Channel. Hey everyone, welcome to the Growth Paramedic. Today I'm going to show you how to set and prime a fluid bag, whether that's giving it for dehydration, for fluid resuscitation because a patient's blood pressure is quite low, for burns, and all the reasons you may need to do it in the pre-hospital setting. The most important thing to do first is to ensure that you get the right medication and your equipment set up before you even try and begin priming. These are your two main things you will use in priming a set. You have your pump set, which includes your drip, tra drip chamber and your pump chamber and also your lure lock. And you also have the fluids that you'll be giving to the patient. Now this is something that I just bought online, but in the ambulance service they have something very different, but still works the same way. Before doing anything else, you want to grab the medication that you are going to give to the patient, or the fluids, whether that's glucose 10% or that's compound sodium lactate. You want to grab it out of the bag and you want to check it yourself. So you want to look at what the name is, you want to look at the expiry date and the dosage. So for this one, this is sodium chloride 0.9%, 500 milligrams, uh, milliliters, uh, and expires in March 2024. Now once I've read that, I want to give that to my partner and ask them if they can repeat. This is important because as we know, these are the rights to the medication, ensuring that's the right medication, right dose, right patient, and, all, and whatnot. And this minimizes your chances for error when it's a high stress situation. You always need to make sure that someone else confirms your medication so you don't accidentally give the wrong medication to the patient. Once you confirm that that is the right medication, you then want to grab your pump set, so that's this thing here, and you want to start opening this up. We'll open this up later, but I'll give you a quick run through of, the, of what the pump set is and the key features that you need to be aware of. So let's open it up. So you should be familiar with the pump sets at uni, but I'll open it up and I'll go through it. Uh, and just with any of these, you always will be wearing your gloves. Um, I'm just not wearing it because, again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So once you open up the, uh, the pump set, the, th the thing you never want to do is you never want the edges to touch the floor. So this is technically still almost sterile. Again, it has been opened. But things you don't want to touch is you don't want to touch the lure lock at the end where the... Let me just focus that. The lure lock at the end where the uh, medication will go into the patient. So key features again, this part, this pointy part here, this enters the patient's... Um, or this enters the medication. So this will poke in and the fluids will then start flowing into what's called the drip chamber. The drip chamber is really important because this allows you to actually measure how many drips um, are going into the patient and you can actually control it using the lock here um, to either slow down the fluids or to increase it. So if you're giving a patient, let's just say, only half of a bag of fluids um, and you notice it's going really fast, like it's flowing non-stop, you can actually slow it down by pushing this halfway or almost closed to have a nice slow drip uh, and you can almost have like a maintenance fluid going on. The other thing from the drip chamber is your pump chamber. This is really good because if you need fluids in really fast, you can squeeze this multiple times and you can keep squeezing to get fluid into the patient really quickly. And, and we'll be talking about this um, soon because this is really important because this is the reason why we get so many bubbles when we set up priming. Um, I'm going to show you how to avoid this at, at, at all um, and I do it with almost 100% sex rate. Um, um, success rate. Never have bubbles in mind, so it's important that we um, we show this the correct way. And I recommend that you view this more than once, maybe two to three times, just to keep comfortable in how this works. Now, people will always say that you could do this with one hand, but I but I would um, disagree. You should always use two hands for this because. When you're using one hand, although you look cooler, you have increased risk of making mistakes because your number one goal is to prime this line without getting any bubbles in it. And when you do it with one hand, it's very difficult. 
So I always say never do this with one hand and use the other hand to you know hold something else because there's an increased risk of error and that is something you want to avoid. So always two hands. So first of all, I like to start off we're, we're just we're just stretching this out right. And you see this see this lock? I like to move this all the way up to the top. So this is a bit tangled, so I'm just going to move this around a bit. There we go. So you see this? I'm going to move it all the way to the top. You see everyone else do it differently, but this is the way I do it. So if you want to learn from me, um, I recommend going all the way up to the top where the second little lock is. Okay. So move up here, and now I want to tighten this up. So after I move the little lock all the way to the top, near where the second little lock is, I'm going to squeeze it all the way to the top, so that way there's no chance that fluids can go can flow through because this acts on a gravity system. This isn't um, mechanically or electrically pumped. This all relies on gravity. So once I squeeze that, I'm happy. And now what I like to do is I like just to wrap it like that. I like to invert it. And so that way, with my other hand, I can hold like that. So that way, when the fluids start going, I can have a, I can have a look at the fluids as it's coming through. And the moment the fluids reach the end bullet lock, I can squeeze it shut, and that way the fluids won't leak out. Uh, and another thing, another thing. Once the fluids are put into the drip chamber, as I've mentioned, this works on gravity. And everyone likes to put this into a plastic bag or something in case it leaks. But really, as long as the lure lock is above the fluids, so if the fluids are here, if the, if the lure lock is down here, fluids are going to flow because it's below the, uh, the medication. So gravity is going to work and it's going to push the fluids out. But the moment I put it up here, the fluids will never leak out. And so I can just gently push it here. Yep, there's a bit of fluid coming out, and now I'm good to go. There's no need for you to put this into a plastic bag and, and, let, it, and let it run, because then you'll have a lot of fluid coming out before you, before you lock it up. So that's just something really good to know. Um, when I like to set it up, I like to set it up a little bit high, and then just slowly go down until it's fully primed. Okay, once we've got that set up, I'm now going to look at this. As I mentioned in the how-to demonstration, this should always be inverted when you start. So how I like to do it is I like to just grab whatever part here, like so. And the moment that this fills up with fluid, the moment it goes from here all the way up, I drop it. And then it's like this. So I just grab it like this, make sure it's a nice little length, and I have it like a smile. So you have the drip chamber on the left, and the pump set chamber on the on the right and they're giving you a smile both of them are eyes the moment that's full fluid the pump chamber i then drop it and now i'm ready and ready for it to reach to the little lock and then i'll lock it up i'll demonstrate that and i recommend that you go back and re-watch it a few times just so you're comfortable with it okay now that i know that this is the right medication i'm going to open this up and i'm going to start entering it into the drip chamber. For all, for all um, um, just letting you guys know, um, once you check it with your partner, I recommend just taking it out of the bag because then you'll be holding this and it can be a bit, bit difficult. So this has two two things in the in the normal ones that you'll use in the hospital. It only has one, so this is a bit more confusing, but generally the one that's yeah, the one that's pointing out is the one that you stick the, the white tubing in. So the blue one, I'm not too, not too accustomed to these ones, but we'll see which one goes in. Ah, yeah, <laughs> it's the blue one. So it's a blue one here for all purposes, all, um, all for you need to know is the ones in the pre-hospital setting that will have a blue twisting that you pull off. So yeah, it's blue on blue. So you push that in, and now you've entered the fluids, as you can see. This is a really important part. Again, before you even get it down into the into the drip chamber, into the drip chamber, you want this inverted. So start holding it inverted like so. Perfect. And now the fluids are going to enter the drip chamber very lightly. You want to do a couple squeezes. Okay. So watch how I do it. A few squeezes. I like to get it halfway. So about there. Now, now notice, it's not really dripping because the, the lock's fully on. So gravity, although it's still working, it's not working as effectively as it would if it was unlocked. 
So now that I'm happy with that, you watch this, okay? I'm going to just lower this a little bit more just so you can see. But it doesn't matter about the rest that are um, not wrapped around as long as you can see the drip channel. Let's make sure that's focused. Perfect. Okay. So you watch this. I'm going to undo it. The fluids are now going to fill up the pump chamber. Now look how it goes from the bottom to the top, okay? Now that's your smiley face. You want that all the way to the top. Keep going. Once it reaches, once it fills, I'm going to drop it. Now that I've dropped it, it's going to fill all the way to the top. All the way to the top. And I'm just watching, and as you can see, if you can see the, the fluids, I'm going to, I'm going to raise it. All right, now it's almost to the top. I'm going to raise it up. Okay, now look here. See this? There we go. Now, now watch this. That was leaking. Now if I lift it up a bit more, it's leaking again. So it's all reliant on gravity to work. So I do that one more time. Now it's going. Now it's stopped. So you don't need to put this in a plastic bag. You just need to keep this above the fluids um, and it will never drip. Now, I'm going to now that I'm happy it's fully primed, I'm going to lock it up and now that's good to go for the patient. And if you look at this entire line, there is not a single bubble anywhere. And it doesn't matter now, not a single bubble. This has a 100% success rate if you do it exactly the way I showed you. Um, and there's no need for you to fiddle around and try and make it complicated and put it into a plastic bag or use one hand. This, when done right, is a very quick process and trust me guys, in a very stressful situation, you need to have that muscle memory to be able to do it the way that I showed you. So practice, 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 and trust me, it will be a piece of cake. Thank you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the demonstration, and I'll see you next time.